Okay, we've been talking about making stub cuts. This is the first step that we're going to take and I've talked about uh, making enough stub cuts throughout the tree that we're renewing 20% of our of our branches every year. The second step that we want to make is to eliminate this this small wood that you see in this tree these trees. The problem with the small wood is that this will tend to bear up and once this starts setting fruit on it these branches will hang down like this. Anytime you get a pendant branch you'll get a lot of fruit on these branches and they'll all be small fruit and so we just need to come through and we just need to eliminate all of this small wood by taking it off completely. Anytime we see small wood it's got to come off because it will hang down and it will grow small cherries. So we're going to go through this tree and we're going to eliminate all the small wood. We're going to go through the tree and we're going to eliminate all of the pendant wood as well. Anything that hangs down horizontal or below horizontal that is weak needs to be eliminated. Okay, the other thing that I need to do is to think about my variety and rootstock combination. This happens to be Benton on Gisela 5. And with Benton, which is a self-fertile variety, you're going to think that there's going to be a lot of fruit on this particular tree, especially on Gisela 5 rootstock. Uh, Benton, however, is not particularly productive, not like Lapins or, or Sweetheart. So we'll probably want to, to leave an intermediate amount of, of wood on this, on this tree. But again, we're going to eliminate a lot of this really small wood that we see here and leave a couple of the, of the larger shoots that are a little bit more upright in order to, in order to fruit up. Now, if this was a uh, Lapin's tree, for example, especially if it's on Gisela 5 or Gisela 6, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to eliminate almost all of this little wood, this smaller wood, because what would tend to happen then is that fruit wood would grow on all of this and the tree would overproduce. If it is something like a combination of Regina on Gisela 6 or Gisela 12 or even Gisela 5, I'm going to be leaving a lot more of it because Regina tends to not be as productive as some of these other varieties that we've been talking about. And so in that case I want to leave more surface wood in order to set potentially more fruit where I have a, 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 a rather non-productive variety such as Regina. Okay, we've, we've uh, done two of our four steps so far. We've stubbed back uh, some of the larger wood, trying to renew some of our spurs. We've also eliminated some of this smaller wood as you see here and here. The third step now is to think about how do we reduce the future cropping potential on this tree. And what I need to do then is to come through and I need to take a third of the tips off of each one of these, of these branches. So throughout the entire tree then I'm going to be hitting all of the new growth on this, on this tree just by tipping all of these branches as you see here. The reason why this tipping is important is because if you notice at the tip of this branch the bud density is much higher than at the base of the branch. In addition, when these buds start to flower there will be more flowers per spurs out here at the tip than at the base. And so if I come in here and I remove a third of this branch, I'm actually eliminating about a half of the potential fruiting capacity of this branch. So all I come in here and do is just to tip that and you'll see that these buds back here are further apart. They will have uh, less fruit and will tend to eliminate some of that clumping that you get, especially on varieties such as Lapins and Sweetheart. Okay, this is a Gisela 5 tree, so I'm always going to be thinking about whether it's, especially with Gisela 5, but also with Gisela 6, Gisela 12, about how do I keep the vigor up in this tree. And so one of the things that I need to be, be doing is pruning more to upright wood, leaving this upright wood and taking off some of the more horizontal branches like you see here. By removing some of this lateral wood as well, it puts more strength in these branches that I'm, that I'm leaving, but I'm also eliminating some of these just to try to keep the strength in these branches that, that are left. So instead of having 
a dozen branches. I've got one, two, three, four branches left in this, on this particular lateral coming off of the trunk. Same thing is true over here. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to eliminate some of this wood because if I've got too much wood, I'm reducing the amount of vigor on this tree overall. This tree is coming into its fifth leaf and at that point in time, that's a critical um, juncture for these trees. It's easy to keep the vigor up on a young tree. Once a tree becomes, especially on these Gisla 5 rootstocks, once a tree becomes five, six, seven years old, they start to slow down and then you lose your vigor. And so again, you're going to have to come in here and think, okay, now where can I, how do I keep the vigor up in this tree? And you keep the vigor up in the tree by eliminating some of this wood, taking off branches like this, and reducing the amount of branches that you have on your, overall on your tree. Taking off some of the weak wood like we were talking about earlier. Um, leaving more upright branches like you see here. And uh, again, now I've got, coming off of this, I've got one, two, three, four, five branches. And that will allow this, these branches that are left to have lots of vigor for this next year and produce good quality wood.